go. How's it going? I am well. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. I'm on my iPad today. So, well, I know it's funny isn't it? when you look at the picture of yourself in there. It looks like you've gone cross-eyed because you're looking <laughs> at the other part. Why not to do that too much? People think I've got a glass eye. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all moving forwards with you, though, guys. Then it sounds great. Yeah, yeah. Well, finally, we've uh, you know we've been working pretty hard at it for well, I guess since the pandemic and. Finally, we moved to a, a network now, which is, you know, they have a built-in app and they have a built-in million-something subscribers or whatever it is. And, yeah, it should be pretty nice. That's cool. That's brilliant. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you. If nothing else, you know, they have the marketing engine already built in and they have the advertising engine already built in. So it'll be nice. Something I don't have to do. Yeah, exactly. That's great. And I've seen all your, your sort of chart success as well. Um, oh yeah, you know, yes, he's pretty, they're really good, really. Yeah, good. yeah, he's kicking tail. I'm, I'm proud of him. So, well done, good, 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 good. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna say the same thing about you. I keep watching you guys. You guys are constantly on playing gigs and doing shit, and it's pretty wild. It's nice. I think yeah. the last time we really talked was like right around the pandemic, right? We were all kind of locked down and couldn't really do much, and. Yeah, and then we did have a chat around about a year or so ago, I think, when our last record came out. We, mm-hmm. had, a, we had a quick chat um, around then, but we haven't really spoken since. Right. Um, since then. So, yeah, it's been pretty pretty full on. Yeah, it looks um, like the gates opened. The new guys just took advantage and went at it, right? Well, hopefully. It, it doesn't <laughs> right. feel like that behind the scenes. But Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess social media is um, sort of deceiving as well, right? It makes everything... It's only the bright side of things. Yeah, yeah, and especially for a band, you're not going to put on stuff. You've not been doing a lot for the last three weeks, um, <laughs> right? Yeah, right. For you, you know, you, you wouldn't put that up. But yeah, it, it's still a bit difficult in terms of there's still a bit of a backlog, certainly with festivals, of yeah. getting on because they've got everyone booked up from sort of eighteen months ago still. Right. And there's only lots, so. Um, we're not on as many festivals this summer as we would have liked, but you know we've still got a good a good few to to start us off. Do you still run into that problem in shows too? Because I imagine like there's still everybody who wants to get out and play, right? And there's only so many venues and yeah. I mean, we've just done a UK a little UK run a few weeks ago, um, and because obviously we we wanted to do a run, so so we were getting gigs on consecutive days. The first one was on Easter Sunday. Mm-hmm. Which of course is not the best, the best day to play, right? But, yeah, but that was what we could get to, to you know to fit in with the with the with the short UK um, run of shows we did. But it was good; it was great. You, you just got to keep going. I mean, you got to keep playing and doing as many things as you can. Are you finding the crowds to be super uh, excited to be there as well, and like a lot more energy exchange? Um, I don't know. It's hard to say, but. They're definitely glad to be there. Yeah, as you are, I'm sure. Um, but it, sometimes it seems so long ago, you can't remember what it was like before, even though it was <laughs> no. only a few years. That's terrible, isn't it? Yeah, and it is. And now it seems a long time ago since the lockdowns and all the... It does. All, all, and it was only, obviously, a couple of years ago, if that, really. Yeah, like a year and a half ago was probably, yeah. you know, final. Still thing. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. What do you guys? Uh, what do you guys have planned then? I know you said you've got a couple of festivals going on. You've yeah. So the next uh, one we've got at the end of May, we're on the main stage at a festival in the UK called Call of the Wild, um, nice. which we're really looking forward to. That um, we've got a couple of other things during the summer, and then um, late September we're heading over to Europe. So we will be going to Belgium, Switzerland, and Italy. Nice. Um, couple of things up our sleeves hopefully for later on in the year which we can't right. yet talk about because then they're not confirmed right. and then hopefully um our manager and agent is working on, on us coming to the states next march that'd be wonderful yeah we're trying to get on the you know the south by southwest festival in austin texas oh yeah okay um which is in march and then we're going to work around that with with the tour dates so nice we, it, we'll probably be over there for sort of two to three weeks sweet which, do you find yourself yeah that'd be great to see you guys over here but do you find yourself approaching preparing and getting ready for tour differently now well as a 
well, as in booking the tour, or do you mean as in ourselves? No, as in yourselves, like as an artist or a musician, you know, after knowing what we just came out of. We're still there. You, yeah, yeah. I don't know what's happening. Hold on. Do I have you? Hello, hello. Bruce? Hey, I'm here, you. Tim. I don't know if you can hear me. Tim? Let me see what this connection looks like. Hold on. Don't hang up. Yeah. There. Hey, there you go. I've got you. I don't know what happened. No. Right. Can you? Am I back for you? Yeah, uh, we're back. You, okay, good. Yeah. No, so, I mean, yeah, like, I just, yeah, so as a musician, do you find yourselves, you know, approaching things differently, knowing what we've just been through? Um, I know some of the shows and some of the things I was involved with sort of when we were coming out of the pandemic and the lockdown was a bit strange with everyone in face masks, um, you know, and not really wanting to shake anyone's hand and all that sort of stuff. Um, I think now I've sort of forgotten about it a bit, but I I think people are more aware if someone starts coughing, especially, you know, if you're in the van or the bus or small dressing room, someone starts coughing or whatever, not necessarily thinking it might be COVID, but actually thinking, oh, I don't want to get whatever it, or a cough or whatever it happens to be. Right. So um, possibly maybe things like washing your hands more and all that was probably not a bad thing anyway. <laughs> right. Um, but but it, it, I do feel that certainly with, with my band that everyone's a bit more excited. Um, you know, we're going to do three or four shows or a short tour or just one show. It's everyone's a bit more excited. Right. Uh, it, it was a it was a difficult time, wasn't it? Really, you know, couldn't play at all, couldn't do anything. And when obviously you're a musician or anyone in any creative industry, that's your life. Really what yeah, exactly. And obviously your income as well. But yes, it, it was more feeling inside you if you want to get out. And we did a show. Um, when was it? The end of January at um, a festival over in the UK, an indoor thing called Hard Rock House, and great big stage and it, it, it was a really good good time but I, I i can remember during the show thinking to myself right i've got to make use of this big stage i'm going to be running backwards and forwards and i was <laughs> doing you know i really was enjoying myself right um and that i think would have come again from the pandemic right you know really wanting to really give it some you know when you're out there because it was all taken away from us yes that makes sense what is uh what is the leader of down work minute answer bruce the answer was yes <laughs> <laughs> right so what are you guys working on now are you guys always working on music <clears throat> well we will obviously be doing our third album so there's little bits we've started on already um just with um ideas riff ideas little vocal ideas um a few titles and things like that and what we tend to do is build it up like that i normally write the lyrics um, and the vocal melodies. So once, got, for want of a better word, a backing track, I will start working on that. And then when I'm ready, we'll start doing some demos and um, and start recording it properly. But I'm, if I'm honest with you, we probably won't record that till 2024. Right. Um, and then it's normally sort of eight or nine months after that before it actually gets released. Right. Do you guys Maybe take the time? Do you guys take the time when you're on the road on those long stretches and drives to write together, or is it more just touring and writing? Not really. Together? No, not really. I mean, you might have a few little ideas. I tend to like, personally, interesting titles. Right. So I mean, if I'm on a tour or out somewhere, like yeah, and I see something I like, write it down. And I, I have a little book with all sorts of funny little – obviously, you can imagine two years later when I look in the book, what was it? What on earth was that? Where did I get that from? But it's little <laughs> things that might just get my imagination going. Um, so I'm doing that a lot. Um, I sometimes have a little dictaphone type thing or voice recorder with me. I might do it on my right. phone. If I suddenly think of a line, I'll just say it. So I built up a sort of library of things that I liked at the time. It doesn't mean I'll use them, but I liked at the time. Right. So they've passed the initial um the initial test because i obviously liked it at the time right. and then you it's a funny thing like your imagination because that i always find if i've forgotten about it and then i see something I'm like, oh yeah and then something oh yeah that idea and then i'm off 
rather than just sitting down in the studio or sitting down in a room with a pen and paper going, right, I'm going to write a song. Mm -hmm. I find that harder. I'd rather have a little germ of an idea to start with. And then it's more exciting for me. Do you, are you one of those guys that gets like totally caught up in it then? So that it just runs with it. Or do you have to censor yourself in when those ideas kick in? Uh, It works both ways, but sometimes if I really get, I've written verses and verses and I think, well, this song's going to be 15 minutes. (laughs) So I've got to cut. So then I will cut maybe some of the best lines from, so and make it into a verse. Right. So some of the stuff I write tends to be, um, if you read the lyrics, some of them, it's a lot of wordplay. So it's not necessarily telling the story, but it is telling the story to me because obviously I may have been there or I imagine the story but i quite like doing like that because then someone else could listen to it and it means something completely different to them right you know so for example the uh track on our last album holloway motel is about holloway motel which is a place that we used to stay in all the time in la but the um a lot of the lyrics are sort of little snippets of things that happened when we were there that I've just got together rather than telling you the story of what what happened. It's just little bits and mentions and things like that. I quite like doing it because I think it sort of makes, well, it certainly makes me think a bit what I'm doing, but hopefully it might make the listener talk conjure up different images of things. And connect you differently. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I do it really. It's probably listening to motorhead, for all these years there was a lot Lemmy did a lot of those sorts of things as well and not necessarily I'm trying to copy him at all but when when you've got a favorite band you've listened to a lot you're naturally influenced oh sure Uh, and I always remember you know sort of talking to Lemmy when he was talking about lyrics and he'd sometimes show me something he'd done because he was particularly proud of a certain line so there's a line in a track um of theirs called Angel City that says this is the motorhead track. I'm an intellectual heterosexual. That was one of Lemmy's lines. And I know that Lemmy was so proud of himself for that. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> he's it, great, you know, and it rhymes, which is even better. Yeah. Right, you know, and I, I love little bits, two or three words that go together like that. I've always enjoyed that. So I'll often try to come up with things not as good as that, obviously, right. Bruce, but, but, you know, things along those lines. That's awesome. And I guess, like you said, if, you know, people will connect to it more and then make it their own and then it becomes something completely different from what you, you originally envisioned, but yeah, exactly. it'll make it more listenable to the, you know, the, the listener, I guess. Exactly. I mean, I, I, I not necessarily, I'm, I'm a really overly emotional person as such. I think I have told you the story before when our, uh, because our, our record company is American. Right. And Americans are generally a little more, I don't use the word excitable, but you know, you go, hey, cool, that's great. Right. You know, it might not be anything that amazing, but right. whereas we uh, English people will not tend to be like that generally. And I remember the record company phoning me up to say that Paradise Turned Into Dust, our first single with, with Lemmy and Wurzel, Wurzel on it, had become the second most added track on American rock radio in September 2018. And they said to me, and you'd have to excuse my attempt at an American accent, but the record company executive said to me, hey, man, you must be stoked. And he was like, and I, and I said, Matt, I'm really pleased, but you probably can't tell because I'm English. Right, um, so reserved, right? <laughs> well, no. <laughs> but going, going back to your sort of original question, like sort of getting excited about it, and what we, we were talking about is with with those sort of lyrical things, it really does get me. I, I'm really pleased if I think I've come up with something that I particularly like. And again, you can only go, you can only write it for yourself, you know, and I hope other people like it. But um, <coughs> what I was talking about when I was talking about emotions is if I had written a song about somebody close to me who died. And I have done lots of bits about Wurzel. The song won't say, I miss you, my friend. Right. Where have you gone? My nights are so long. You know, it won't be like that. Right. I will tend to put in 
that sounded quite good actually i, should, I, should <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing I'm like, hey, you just, <laughs> there's, there's a line uh, it down. <laughs> i will tend to put a few things in that may have been little phrases or private jokes we had together so right. then it does sound like a, a love song or a sort of song about a, a fallen hero or something right. like that there'll be little bits but it is for them but the person listening to it probably has no idea right that so makes I, sense. Quite, I quite like doing that because i think otherwise especially obviously because you know words will start the band with me and all that stuff i if i had songs like that i'd probably be standing on stage every every time we did a gig tears streaming down my face yeah and i don't think anyone wants that do they no. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> Yes, rock everyone. I'm Hal Schwartz. And I'm Flynn McClain. Together we host None But the Brave, a podcast dedicated to the music and career of Bruce Springsteen. Bruce and E Street Band are on tour right now for the first time in six years, and we're taking a detailed look at what's happening on stage in our bi-weekly episodes. We've also been recently joined by some very exciting guests, including rock journalist Warren Zanes and Stephen Hyden, Backstreet's Magazine founder Charles Cross, and Barstool's Kirk Menahan. If you're a diehard Springsteen fan, this is the show for you. So please subscribe to Nimba the Brave on your favorite podcasting platform, and we hope to see you further on up the road. Thank you so much! We'll be seeing you! Well, good. That's excellent. So how, what else is going on with the band then? I mean, you're, you're doing the, looking at the tours. You guys are just... Uh... Yeah, well, when we've... Not well, about a year ago, I signed up with a new management company, which is going great. That's really, really, really working on. We're trying to work on getting some more um, support slots with people out in, in Europe. Um, and again, a lot of time is taken up with that sort of stuff right. because we've still got these backlogs. So the bigger bands, some of them are only just starting to get back out on the road. And of course, whoever's booked to support them was probably booked in 2020, 2021. Yeah. So because also they're planning for two years ahead now, you've got the other people who were talking to their management two years ago about a tour that was supposed to be happening now, but now that's 2025. You know, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff like that going on. Um, but we're doing things all the time. You know, we've got a load of new merch coming out in a few months. I have started as well filming my next cooking video. Oh, sweet. <laughs> yes. Um, and I met up with, I don't know if you know him, Don Jameson. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah, did you know Don? Probably, I or? do. He's been on the show a few times. Yes. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. Well, he he's a leader down fan, which was great. But he came on the Black Label, um, sorry, the Black Star Riders tour over in the UK that Phil Campbell was supporting with Michael Munro as well. Right. And he came along for four dates. And I walked past him. He looked at me and went, Tim from Leader of Down. I'd never met him before. And I said, Yeah, we were chatting away. But we got on great, and, and he said he'd love to do a cooking thing with me as well. Um, so that might be quite fun. We might have to do a link up with him out in New York, I think he is, and me over here. We can keep going back with the balls and film it or something. It might be nice. quite cool. Yeah, he's a nice guy. <laughs> really good guy. Really good guy. And he, he was a big Motel fan as well. Yes. Um, and uh, so we've kept in touch. But yeah, the, 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 we j- you just really got to keep going, looking at every little angle, everyone you meet, you know, people that you can help, they can help you, and collaborations and things like that. Um, you know, I think uh, going back to the lockdown again, you sort of got a bit, oh, let me clean my guitar again or something. Yeah. You know, it's now nice to actually be out there using it. Right. Um, and meeting people and you know, networking yeah. and just. Even not networking, just meeting people yeah. is probably the best. And that's actually something I, I have noticed since the pandemic is people like Don and other people who've come over or you're meeting, they're really excited to be sort of hanging out backstage again or chatting or you're going for a curry after the show. Right. It actually has seemed a lot more exciting and people really looking looking forward to it. I've yeah. also noticed notice less arguments when we've been on the road as well you know, not that we argue a lot anyway but it's because everyone's really pleased to pleased to be there yeah right and yeah you haven't been in a long time so it's yeah. enjoy the moment yeah. while you're in it i guess it's all new again yeah and it's quite fun you know trying to get the crowd to you know i i not always do a little bit in the in the show where i just talk about words all for a moment it's something even though words has been gone a long time i don't want to forget him right which i wouldn't but I, I, I always mention him and gave one to cheer and things. And 
I think I've noticed since the pandemic, you know, if people aren't cheering as loud as I want them to, it's quite easy just to rev them up, get them to, to go a bit more because they're all enjoying it rather than going, oh, what's this idiot saying now? You know, oh, he wants us to cheer <laughs> out. Because, you know, all the, you know what's going to happen in the show. Someone can say, I can't hear you. You know, boom. So that's terrible. Let's go, you know, because it's a pantomime, really. You know that's hey. going to happen. But I think maybe a few years ago, people were going, oh, no, here he goes again. But now they're going, yeah, and you can hear them all doing it. <laughs> I think they're so, because even just shouting and letting a big noise out of your mouth is something we haven't really done for a long time. Right. Um, and, and aside from, you know, and aside from, you know, I know we're talking about Leader of Down and being a musician on stage, but from the flip side, I've been going to shows as well, and I'm that guy in the <laughs> that's super excited to be there and while, while i'm probably not the guy that's screaming i am totally enjoying it and being in my element and being around my friends and the people that really are yeah. you know i don't m maybe necessarily not friends but the same guys i see at the shows every yeah yeah every week every month yeah. and it's been great yeah yeah and people miss that you know and, and i think that is showing a lot you know with with crowds and people at festivals and I think there's also more people maybe going to see bands they wouldn't have necessarily gone to see. Yes. Uh, you know, and of course, some of the older guys, they're now quite a lot older because they've sort of missed three or four years of shows. I think a lot of people are wanting to see some of the older bands to make sure they don't miss them. Right. But on that same note, they're also bringing their kids, right? And then you've got yeah. sort of a multi-generational thing happening. Yeah, yeah. And I think that happens a lot in heavy rock and rock in general. Yes. You know, whichever parent is really into it, they won't let it go. Their son or daughter has to like some of the music. It's a bit like <laughs> supporting your favourite football team. I, mean, right. I haven't got children, but I'm a West Ham supporter. And if I did have a child, I support another team, I would be best pleased. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's the same thing with, with music, you know, and it, what a great thing to take your – yeah, one of your children or both your children to a show of a band you like, and then they actually like it. Yes. <clears throat> I think we touched on this before when we've spoken as well. Rock sort of lasts forever. Obviously things date in certain periods or whatever, but the general theme of it lasts forever. It's not a fashion that lasts for six months. So those old songs sound as good as they used to, if not better, you know, compared to some of the more modern stuff. And it wasn't a little pop music fad that was one summer in 1988. It, it, so the kids can really get into it as well. And they, they, you do, you see a lot of young people. Let me used to say, there were lots of sort of 11, 12-year-olds coming to motor shows in the last few years, particularly. Um, who absolutely loved it. Yeah. I wanted to see many times because they knew Lemmy was older and, and not so well. Right. So they keep going to see him. Yeah, I think um, once that, and we may have talked about it in many times we chatted before, but I think once that sort of bug hits you, that music bug, especially like the hard music, heavy metal bug gets you, it stays. It It's there. Right? It, it imprints itself in your DNA and you don't... Strange, isn't it? Because I don't see that as much with other styles of music. No. Maybe classical and things like that and jazz, but not all the other styles. It Rock is, I think, particularly strong in that area. It gets you, and that sort of kicking guitar really gets you. And I remember, you know, in Wurzel, when he was older, sometimes when he'd just play a chord, he'd look at me and really smile. He wasn't doing anything special. He'd just go, Grrr! and he'd grin, would be across his face, and he'd nod. Just because he liked the noise. Yeah. It wasn't, oh, well, look at me, how fast I can play. What it, and, and it's that, isn't it? That really kicks you. Yep. And I think I'll let you go here in a second, but I think, um, you know, everybody's got like a, a, a moment where they became addicted to it or became, or it entered their system or changed their DNA. Like for me, I tell the story all the time. I was in like junior high school, walking to the neighborhood record store and saw a diary of a madman on the wall. Didn't know anything about it. Didn't know anything about heavy music. No idea who Ozzy was picked up this record on the cover alone. And you know, yesterday you're talking about still records that still hold up yesterday while I'm doing housework and stuff. That record mm -hmm. still sounds as great to me as it did then. And I still get chills listening to it. It's crazy. Yeah. Oh, it completely is absolutely mental really. But 
that's also the magic of it, isn't it? Yeah. Do you have a record that uh, that did that for you, like the Gateway? I've told you before. I think how I got into Motorhead because before that I liked lots of different things, but when I saw Motorhead on top of the pops, right, it, the show in England, sandwiched between a load of other pop stuff, which I quite liked, you know. And I was watching it when they came. I remember looking at the screen, thinking, "Who are these maniacs?" This is terrible. What it is, but what is it? I don't know. But something got me right. because I think it was so horrible. And then a couple of weeks later, they were on again, or they were on another show, and I saw them. And I suddenly thought, these guys are unbelievable. I've never had anything like this before. And I got a record. I borrowed one off someone. And then literally from that day, that was it. Um, but I don't think there'd been any signs that I was going to go that way up right. until that. Yeah, I had no idea who Black Sabbath or Ozzy was. I just did it. Yeah. And then you never look back. Never. And there it goes. And you wouldn't have one bad word said against it. <laughs> no. And that record still holds like this really special place yeah. in my heart. Like I still listen to it and go, holy crap, is this good? Mm. And again, even the cover on that record still looks great. Yeah. it's It doesn't look dated at all. It still looks amazing. And no, so they didn't plan this. It's just how it's happened, you know. But I think that that's unbelievable. And the same with the Motorhead album covers, the tracks. Still, even though I know them inside out, upside down, back to front, I still put it on. I go, yeah. And you still sit there with the record in front of you. <clears throat> oh yeah, and I can probably recite all the credits. Yeah, you know, because I've read it so many times. But I still read it, still read it, look at it, and still sounds amazing. And I, I just hope that a lot of the young kids are also getting that as well from other things because that was a special thing that you know we yeah. all had i don't know that they are i mean just based on my son and you know his friends and they're not they're just doing the one song download and moving on and maybe not even listening to that whole song right yeah. like 30 seconds or something mm. yeah and, and it's sad that as well because i think especially you know if they're still teenagers at school or whatever you want songs that you remember from a certain summer and, you know, you could probably tell me, you know, what summer, what were the songs you were listening to? You, yes. you know. So that's why we do really well in sort of music quiz nights at the local bar. You know, <laughs> right. where was this? Oh, yes, there we go. And you've got it. And kids look at you, how do you remember that? But they won't probably have that because they're not so as into it. it like you say, the tracks. Yep. Um, but rock kids are still going out and buying the vinyl and doing this and, and people like Taylor Swift, she's done amazing things for vinyl. So a lot yeah. of them, yeah, she's doing very well with that as well. But a lot of the sort of younger people that I know that like Taylor Swift, they will go and buy several copies of the same thing because it's on the different colored panels. Oh, really? Just, just as we used to do. Oh, yeah. I did not know that. That's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is which is really good. Different type of music, but it's exactly the same principle. Right. Yeah. Just get more involved. Though I mean, I guess the word is immersed. Right. We were so immersed mm. in excited yeah. and immersed in the record mm. and we actually listened to it we weren't doing something else at the same time certainly not on the first three weeks of playing it you know like you you buy it sit on the floor in your in your living room yeah. or in your bedroom and then play it and read everything right it was a process exactly and that's how we know every word all these years later to all these songs <laughs> right <laughs> i still There's do no, the same thing right that's how we did it <laughs> And so the last one then, how's uh, what's been the response to Turner the Screw then? I know it's been a little bit of time, but it's been doing pretty well. Yeah, so yeah, Screw Tape Letters, yeah. Um, it's been great. Yeah, we got, Sorry. yeah, we had 10 in the Amazon Heavy Rock charts. A um, couple of the singles were in the top five in the iTunes Heavy Rock charts. So we were really pleased. We got some amazing reviews, really, really good reviews. Sales have been good. Um, we've now just got to do it again. And, and write another one that, that gets received as well. <laughs> but yeah, we've been really pleased with it. It's been, it was quite a difficult one because obviously on the first one we had so many guests and obviously Wurzel was on there and right. all this sort of thing. So this is the first one. We still had a couple of guests, said Dennis Stratton, Iron Maiden. Oh um, yeah, from Iron Maiden, right. Yeah, it was on, on there. Um, but it was more should we say consistent album because we recorded it all at the same time in the same place so it felt a bit more together maybe not the right word but you know what i mean it's more of a block yeah. work 
rather than 10 tracks that were all done at different times. <coughs> so we'll expand on that. There won't be any big um, style changes or 15-minute ballads, but um, we're just trying to find in our our slot at the moment, you know. And, right. and I don't think you can, I mean, as a band, I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think you try and not write the same record, but you can't change, like you said, you can't change your your wheelhouse or your genre or you'll lose no, everybody. No. You lose everybody and then it's time again. Exactly. Right. But yeah, it'll be a good time, catchy, sort of heavy rock and roll um, stuff. Well, which is timeless. That's, that's the idea. Right, <laughs> I mean, that's timeless. We're talking about all these records. Uh, rock yeah. and roll is timeless. I mean, let me, what do we say? Oh, we say he wanted to write something that would get you up on a Monday morning, that sort of stuff. Um, and I, I'm a big believer of that as well. You know, something that can really, yeah, come on, let's do this and forget about everything else and just have a good time. Right. That makes sense. And so I'm not blowing, blowing smoke up your ass, but screw tape letters definitely is, uh, is one of the, you guys sent me the vinyl and that's one of those okay. vinyls that definitely gets me going on a, you know, on a good day. I'll, I'll get up, get some, doing some stuff and be like, that's one of those ones that still stays in regular rotation. I love it. Good. Well, oh, thank you very much. Bruce. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So got one satisfied customer there. <laughs> Actually. So a couple of things with that and then I'm going to go, um, yeah, you sent me the, uh, the colored vinyl, which is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. But also, uh, a buddy of mine was in one of those contests that we did where you supplied the records. Mm -hmm. so he got a hold of that one, and I just saw him again in New York recently and loves you guys. So he's going to be really excited that you're coming to the States. Yeah. Well, New York is one of the places we're going to come to. So, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He'll, he'll probably be there screaming up front because he's a huge that's fan. Good. good. Oh, that's good to hear. That's brilliant. Well, no, two of like... us anyway. Yeah. <laughs> that's a start. <laughs> Well, Tim, that's all I've got, man. I appreciate you taking the time. No, it's great to see you again, Bruce. I didn't Take mean to care. bother you guys. I just figured I'd reach out. It's been a while since we chatted. so Sounds great. Good to see you, and we'll speak soon. Hey, be well, my friend. Take care. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. 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 Ever wonder what a punch from Elton John feels like? Or how you cope with having turned down the chance to be in Nirvana? Or what signal Keith Richards gives when he wants you to get the hell out of his hotel room? Fans of Too Much Effing Perspective don't have to wonder because they've heard these exact stories and a jillion others on our podcast. I'm Alex Hoffman, former tour manager for Radiohead. And I'm musician and comedy writer Alan Keller. On the TMEP show, we get guests like Nancy Wilson from Heart, Jeremiah Freights from The Lumineers, and Modern Family's Julie Bowen to tell us things they may have only shared with their therapist, clergy, or a TMZ stringer. So join us on Too Much Effing Perspective. That's E-F-F-I-N-G Perspective. The only podcast you crank up to 11. <laughs>